right, so I just got out of the aquarium and be checking out the botanical gardens next. All right, so I purchased my ticket online after I was scanned into the aquarium at the entrance. I was given this, which is my admission to the gardens. So I showed it to them and get in. So if you're just doing the gardens, you can get your tickets over there at the aquarium because their ticket booth here is not open. Got this awesome sculpture here called the Rescue. Kids here in the tree. These kids trying to climb up to rescue the cat. That is so cool. So you can rent strollers and wheelchairs. That. Just love all the different plants and flowers. I realize not everybody is a fan of botanical gardens, but I absolutely love stuff like this. Especially springtime, all the flowers are blooming. Just one of the nice walking paths. And I can really smell some of these flowers here. Very fragrant. Here's some of the birds we might see here today. These are all wild birds. And of course some of the flowers. So lots of green spaces also. This is really nice. Nice tree line. Walking trail. This is nice. Ooh, this is really nice. So I'm going to go check out the children's fantasy garden first. Going through here. This is cool. It looks like a cave with all of the, the vines and roots growing through it. I see some big footprints here too. The mushrooms. Ooh. This is pretty neat. So he shrunk down to the size of bugs. Look at that. Got the big flower pot and a bee. Get some seeds. Wow, look at that. Big old watering can. Wow, the Red. smells over here are just fantastic. I'm so glad I came here during spring. So this area is going to have lots of stuff for the kids to climb on, I'm quite sure. Yeah, there's Ant. Like, honey, I shrunk the kids. If you ever seen that movie, you would appreciate this. So, yeah, this is pretty neat. Lots of vines. Looks like a big old pumpkin. Yeah, just a big giant hollow pumpkin. <laughs> yep, I was right. They're slides. Yeah, slide down the log.
big giant pine cones. Remember, we're supposed to be just shrunk down. Okay, this is interesting. Not sure what's to do here. Oh, it's a maze. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, it's a maze. Yeah, that's what it is, a maze. It's amazing. Ooh, it's a dead end. Oh, no. I'm going to be lost in here forever. Never gonna get out of here, oh my gosh. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Can you go down here? There we go. Oh, we got all different types of bamboo. Bamboo is a fast growing grass. We got black bamboo. A lot of people like to plant bamboo in their yards, however, you have to take precautions. If you do plant bamboo and you only want it in a certain spot, you have to take precautions and put in a bamboo barrier underground around where you plant the bamboo. Because bamboo will spread beyond where you plant it because their sprouts come up underground and they travel. So if you don't take precautions before you plant bamboo, you're gonna have a bamboo everywhere in neighbor's yards where you don't want it. Ooh, vegetable garden. Got some carrots. See, if we weren't shrunk down, these would be normal sized carrots. So yeah, all the carrots. Yeah, see, I love flowers like this. Need some other actual vines. I'm not sure if these are grapes or, or what. There we go. Yeah, this is nice. Nice place to sit down and relax. Of course, also keep in mind this is the kids' fantasy garden, so there's gonna be kids running around. These are really nice, these are above ground planters you can actually build yourself if you want to. It is. That's a really good idea. I might do this in my backyard. Of course, I'd have to have raised flower beds because of my tortoise Sheldon who lives in my backyard. Most of you know about him. His name is Sheldon. I love how the vines grow up on the sides of the buildings. This is the end of the fantasy garden. Got the back portion of the dragon. Yeah. Yeah, see plants like this I really like. What's your favorite More flowering vines. I have vines on my back fence. And they're they're not the nice type of vines like you see here. They're just a, a nuisance vine. And something on them I am highly allergic to. So I can't even pull them down. Last time I did it, probably about 10, 15 years ago, I ended up with a really bad rash all over my arms and my face. And it was just horrible. 
Next up we got G-Scale Railroads, Railroad Garden. Oh, is this going to mention I don't see a train running, but now I do see a train coming. Germany Pavilion at Epcot, Walt Disney World in Florida has a model railroad. There we go. There's the train coming by. <laughs> yeah, this is nice. Oh yeah, you got all the houses. Uh, Dad, another building. Train one is up again. Train one is up again. <gasps> it's Tom and the Tank Engine. I'm not sure who that one is. Who just stopped? We've got bridges. Now I mentioned a train presentation at the Epcot Pavilion in uh, Germany. Or the Germany Pavilion at the Epcot is what I meant to say. Oh my gosh, the train went off the tracks. That's terrible. Oh no. But occasionally there'll be a squirrel right near the railroad tracks and it just looks like a like a Godzilla type of a monster. Mm -hmm. Or you see lizards. Oh, there we go, that's nice. Oh my gosh, that's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves I just saw on that train. Look at that. That's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves on that train. Wow. All the boulders. <gasps> Look at that. Got Elmo and Oscar the Grouch in that one. Wow. Do you realize you'd be seeing all those different characters? Ooh, next up is the Bugarium. Do you like buggies? Oh, the Butterflies and Bees is not open. Yeah, as I was just in Texas and driving through New Mexico yesterday to get here to Albuquerque, I passed through quite a few real desert areas that had stuff like this growing. Here we go, Bulgarium. This is nice too. I got a little water. 
a bug. And why are bugs important? They actually are important. Alright, I really like this. You guys are familiar with my channel, you know I love the good waterfall. Oh, New Mexico's Chihuahuan Desert. Got a blue death fanning beetle. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty neat. Next up, you got a desert hairy scorpion. I was looking for the scorpion, and the scorpion is right underneath. Right there. There is a scorpion. The Arizona black scorpion. There we go. Well, now I want to get stung by one of these. There's several different types of critters in this habitat. You got desert millipede, magnificent velvet ant, desert skunk beetle, tail desert skunk beetle, got red back beetle, little red velvet ant, and flanged darkling beetle. And I do see the. Uh, yeah, the, the desert millipedes. Another one right over there. You got this. Got this bug right here. Oh, here's another one. Kind of poking out. Other ones right here. Ants probably gonna be hard to spot. Another critter in the back there. Got a giant water bug. Oh, there we go, they're in the back. Look at that, oh man. Got sunburst diving beetle. That's pretty neat. Northern crawfish. It's like a farm is right in here. There you go. Got bug or plant. Got gentle nymph stick insect. Okay, they are making this extremely difficult to find the actual animal. I thought you do see one up above. There we go. And now that I know what they look like, I see another one right here. You can see all the all the greenery they have in here. They make it really hard to find them. With a larger jungle nymph. And this is a Looks like a, a little bit easier maybe to see them because they can be a little bit larger, but maybe I'll get a better view on the other side. It's bigger, better. All right, this is a jungle nymph stick insect males. There's all sorts of stuff here. Oh, I do see one right up above. There we go. And females are larger than these guys. Alright, gonna go up the little incline here. Got high mentality. Just the importance of bees. This is honey. Different types of honey. Bees are temporarily off exhibit. Yellow jackets and honeybees. It's a yellow jacket nest. And beekeeping. Got the smoker. And the veil. And then the gloves. 
different types of hives. There are restrooms right inside of the bug house. All right, so this is the other side view of the stick insect. See, I was right down there just a moment ago, right before I showed you the information about the bees. Got wild of biodiversity. Got a green bottle blue tarantula. And that is in a perfect position also. One of the workers just pointed them out. Very nice. And we got Brazilian white knee tarantula. Oh yeah. There we go. Trying to get you a good view, but the glass is really smudged from all the little kids. A salmon pink bird eating tarantula. Ooh. Wow. That's pretty neat. Did you know? I did not know this. The Brazilian black tarantula. There we go. Brazilian black tarantula. Other amazing arathropods. Got olive need flat rock scorpion. It's a really good spot for me. Got ivory millipede. Got right there. Got western tiger centipede. And I was kind of looking around for him and seeing right down below. Look at that. Got big Ben scorpion. Down right there. Got Western Black Widow. And look at all that spider web. Oh, there we go. Now I see the spider. All the way in the back. Yeah, all the way in the back here. Again, the glass is very really smudged. I'm trying to show it to you. It's kind of center. Right in the center. Here we go. Here we are. All in this together. Got Goliath beetle. It's the males. Wow, look at the size of this guy. Wow. Really pretty though. I'm sorry, handsome. It's a male. That man, very nice. And we got the females. So yeah, the females are just a little bit smaller. So very nice looking. <laughs> got Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Yeah. Got to hold one of these insects before. Look at that. Be the stuff of nightmares right here. Even if you like bugs, this would be kind of scary. Well, again, I got to hold one of these before. I actually forget where it was because it's been many years. And their little, their little legs as they walk, you know, they was on the back of my hand or in my, in my palm of my hand also. Kind of tickled a little bit. The honey pot ants. Oh. This shows you their what their underground areas would be like. And some of these other insects. Lizards, fish, small snakes, things like that. Before we got naked mole rats. Got the working class. We got fine dining. So yeah, naked mole rats live in tunnels like this. Of course, these are artificial. Normally they would live underground. See them all in there. 
They're all napping together and laying together. And they would use this tunnel system. Each of these little rooms represents a different area of their of their habitat. And they're designated for different purposes, like they'll have a one where they store all their food, one's going to be a sleeping compartment, other's going to be where they use the bathroom. Got Her Majesty and Super Nannies. Yeah, as you can see how this one has food in it. But they have access to all these different chambers. And where do they live? Leaf cutter ants are off habitat right now. Next we got mantises and cockroaches. Got a ghost mantis. That's this guy right here. Indian domino cockroach. Very aptly named. You got a giant cave cockroach. Right in the back right here. You got orange spotted cockroach. Again, very aptly named. Simon Doa cave cockroach. Ooh. And we got beetles. Ugandan giant flower beetle. Oh, wow, that's nice. Jade headed flower beetle. Oh, yeah. Again, very aptly named. They got the green head right there. Black cactus longhorn beetle. Yeah, and evidently the feast on cactus. Derby's flower beetle. Whoa, now that's fantastic. Flamboyant flower beetle. All right, night in the jungle. Got death's head cockroach. Now, the cool thing in here is to use red light, so we're able to see. But the red light does not affect the animals or insects. Got pink legged millipede. Yeah. Got giant peppered cockroach. Ooh. Look at that. Got emperor scorpion. And the scorpion is just on the other side right here. There we go. Got Goliath bird ear tarantula. Yeah, and this one's right here. Goliath is right. That is a big fuzzy spider. Got Indian ornate tarantula. I was trying to look around for him and I just noticed him. Kind of right inside here. There you go. And you got Trinidad Chevron tarantula. Wow. That's a nice looking spider, also. All right, going back outside. So, yeah, I'm back outside again. That was pretty neat. This is really nice. This is tile art. Information on here about the pond and what you may find here comes where the water is. They patrol on the pond. So, yeah, this type of ecosystem would be home to lots of different critters. The most likely, you know, there'd be different insects, there would be uh, turtles and frogs, probably lizards. Not necessarily in this 
because this is artificially created, but in the wild. This is more of the Southwest style plant you would see. Because I'm in the Southwest right now. All right, so if you are from Albuquerque or New Mexico or the surrounding areas and you do come to visit, make sure you check out the botanical gardens because as you're seeing, there's lots of other stuff to see and experience besides just the flowers and the plants. Oh, and they got some construction going on. Renovation work or new stuff being built. Pass by the train garden again. After you enjoy the insects. All right, next up we got the Spanish Moorish Garden. Got all the tiles. Oh, this is really nice. A good place for pollinators, you know, bees and butterflies. This is really pretty. And all the different roses. There we go. Very fragrant over here also. I always like these towering trees right here. We got this trellis with all of these huge vines on it. That is so neat looking. All of the greens on the opposite side. So this is all of the, the vines. Yeah, that's her Got some porcupines here. Oh, yeah. And these are wild porcupines. These do not belong to uh, the bio park. Gentlemen here said they come right from the over by the river, which is near here. Got another one right here. And there's a youngster right here. Going around to the other side. You can see the porcupine's head and face. That's pretty neat. You never know what you're going to see. I always get excited when I see squirrels and chipmunks. But seeing other wild critters is pretty cool too. I've actually never seen these guys in the wild. Yet more lovely flowers. So several people are here relaxing, enjoying a picnic lunch. So just came out of the ceremonial garden, which was where the trellises are, and the porcupines. Pretty neat. So I'm gonna head off this way. This is cool. We're gonna go underneath this trellis right here. Oh, I like this fountain. That is cool. <laughs> yeah, lots of benches. Lots of our lovely plants. Yeah, so flowers like this are going to definitely attract butterflies and bees. So anytime you see bees flying around, don't try and kill the bees. The bees are doing their jobs. And male bees do not actually have stingers, so that you can't be stung by them anyway. Now, if you go by a bee nest, 
and you disturb the nest, that's where you're going to get stung from. All right, you got these big buildings right here you're going to check out. So you got the map showing you right where we are. So we still got the heritage farm to look forward to. Got the Mediterranean Conservatory. Oh, this is fantastic. Very comfortable in here. Of course, it's been a nice cool day. It was 45 degrees Fahrenheit when I woke up this morning, came outside. Trees and olive trees. The artwork on the wall also. Nice rock work. Came back down by the entrance, going to this other pathway. Very nice. These pops of color. I got plants like this in my front yard. area right across from um, the Mediterranean is the Desert Conservatory. Got tree desert. Oh yeah, all the different cactuses. My mother would absolutely love this. She's got a bunch of cactus plants. Got High Desert. Got a Baja Wonderland. So yeah. Very, very nice. We got bajadas, playas, and pavement. So yeah, this is very nice. And when you go outside from the desert conservatory, you got this other area right here. Very comfortable today. So if you come out here 
during the summertime, it's probably gonna be very, very hot. All the rocks. Very nice. Got a healer's garden. Wow, this is fantastic. It's nice, you got some benches and some big stone you can sit on. Very fragrant over here also. So yeah, a lot of different plant life here you can use for medicinal. Of course, not every flower blooms in spring. Especially different herbs and other assorted stuff that would grow in a garden like this. Alright, so I'm going to follow the pathway along. This represents winter. It's all on the walls. Oh, then we got spring. I did enjoy. I did enjoy. All right, unfortunately, the Rio Grande Heritage Farm is not open yet. That is a bummer. I was looking forward to this, but they are doing some renovation work. Summer is the big season. So, sorry, not going to be able to see this. That's all right. There's still some other fun stuff to, to see. More roses. So we got summer. You feel like I should be singing a song, winter, spring, summer, or fall. All you gotta do is call. Don't worry, I'm not gonna sing. I'm definitely not a good singer. Don't wanna hurt you guys' ears. Lose all my subscribers. <laughs> Get dead. Yep, and fall. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's a heritage farm. So if you have been here and you've been to the heritage farm, leave some comments down below what you experienced here. Yeah, they're doing a lot of work here. It's always a good sign when they're doing renovation work. It means they are receiving donations and funds for upkeep renovation projects, new areas. Okay, you get more of these pretty roses. My mother used to grow roses when I was a kid. Not professionally, of course, just she liked roses. Our garden. And roses in the arid climates. Roses in the southwest. We got the High Desert Rose Garden Cafe. So is there a menu board? Get yourself some snacks. So there's also restroom locations right here. All right. I'm gonna check this area out. At the Albuquerque Bonsai Club. Oh, I absolutely love bonsai trees. 
spoke earlier about the Germany Pavilion at Epcot at Walt Disney World. The Japan Pavilion has all sorts of different bonsai trees all around their entire pavilion. These are fantastic also. Ooh, I like this one. Ooh. Wow, that's neat too. Boxwood. Ficus. Oh, Japanese black pine. That's really nice. Juniper. That's a plum. Orange honeysuckle. Cedar. Wow. What's your style? All different types of bonsai trees. Oh, I like this, Green Island Ficus. Chinese Elm. Korean Hornbeam. Spruce. I had no idea some of these plants and trees could be made in the bonsai. I did not know that. Yeah, Pine Holly, that is fantastic. Wow, that is gorgeous. Several different elms, that's an elm. And blue juniper. Fantastic ones of juniper. Tried it maple. And ginkgo. Another juniper. Another elm. And this is San Jose Juniper. This is fantastic also. Cockabinus. That's what it is, because I probably messed up how you say it. This is neat. Juniper Cascade, where it grows downward. And the John's Juniper. Wabi Sabi. All right, checking all the different bonsai trees. That was really, really nice. I never realized that some of those trees could become bonsais, and I was speaking to one of the the members in there, and she was telling me any any tree plant that has uh, a wood like like the trees can be made into a bonsai. That's pretty interesting. So yeah, this has all of the flowering plants. It said spring is a really good time of year to come here. If you want to see all of the pops of color. I've been to multiple different types of gardens and throughout my journeys around the United States. Yeah, that's really nice. All the different roses. Just whatever you do, do not paint the roses red. The queen does not like that.
and butterflies and bees would absolutely love this. And I'm sure they do. This is nice. So I noticed there's a mixer of annuals and perennials. Annuals come back each year, perennials, which are a lot of uh, different places, you know, like zoos and places, uh, some of the zoos and aquariums, they will plant perennials because they're really, really pretty, but they only last one season. They always want it to look nice and immaculate. Like I mentioned Disney World and Epcot earlier. They have their, their Springy Garden Festival and the, the staff there are, are phenomenal with all of their flowers and their plants. Oh, I like these purple flowers. That's really nice. So yeah, uh, another entrance to Heritage Farm. Purples and the yellows. All right, we're into the Japanese garden. Just saw some fantastic bonsai trees. Really love the architecture from Japan and China. Bamboo and here a waterfall. I'm gonna head to the left first. So yeah, I love the bamboo. Well, yeah, but but they have shoots and bamboo. That's how they grow. Is they have the shoots. Oh, do they look like plants? Yeah, very nice trails. Yeah, they got a nice pond. There's the waterfall. That's it. Yeah, nobody heard a waterfall. And I do see some koi fish swimming around. I see a couple ducks. Lots of places to sit down. So yeah, this is a mixture of different types of Plants and trees. Oh, now this is nice. Actually, walk across it. And it goes down into that nice pond that we saw. This is a nice looking tree. So there's lots of nice wide trails and there's smaller winding trails that go through everything. You can see how nature kind of recovers this tree. Looks like it was almost falling over, but then it's growing out again. So just lots of shrubs. Some nice ornate trees. 
There we go, there's some nice flowers. Yep, I do see Koi. <laughs> and Koi are a type of carp. Just like goldfish are a different type of carp. Hi, fish. Do you give me some food? Found a nice rock to sit on right by the waterfall. Very tranquil. I was just right on the other side not that long ago. Trying to get you an unobstructed view. All right, so I'm at the far end now. Looking at all of the rest of the koi. Nice mallard duck over there. Yeah, sorry. So all the fish are at the far end here. Ooh, the fish chasing a duck away. Like, this is our snack. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, actually they're feeding the fish Cheerios. Ah. That's what the fish are having. It's a nice duck. I'm surprised there's only one duck. Only duck that I've seen. Fishy, fishy. Mm. Fishy, fishy, fishy. All right, everybody. That is going to do it for my visit to the ABQ Biopark Aquarium and Botanical Gardens. Had a fantastic time today. I am sorry the Heritage Farm was not open. I'm a little disappointed, but completely understand. They're getting ready for the busy summer season. The gardens are fantastic. Had a lot of fun in the aquarium also, not a very large aquarium. Lots of information. You learn about the ecosystems of the Rio Grande River and the Gulf of Mexico. That's what all the aquarium features, fish from those areas. So leave some comments down below what your favorite part of my experience was today. I like some from both the aquarium and the botanical gardens. Like I said, I am a big fan of, of gardens. I always have liked that since I was a little kid. Never really, really good at growing stuff. I have some good hardy plants that I planted in my front yard probably about 15 years ago, maybe a little less. They're all growing up. I gotta trim them back constantly. So if this happens to be your first video and you like aquariums or perhaps botanical gardens like I do. I upload new videos every Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I go to different places all around the United States. Zoos, aquariums, theme parks, amusement parks, state and national parks. All over the country. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.